And cameras, they are fixing a problem that doesn't yet exist for most photographers. And by doing so, are making people's photography worse. As it has it, why do you think I wear these glasses? Without them, I can't read a page arm's length. I can't look at a photograph. I can't see my son's face when he's like right here. So I bought them to solve a problem. Had I bought them 10 years ago, in the idea of like having better eyesight, because obviously they must improve something, my eyesight would have actually been worse. You know this, if you put somebody else's glasses on, you, you can't see anything. This is the pocket guide for the EOS 6D Mark II, which is a camera I bought last year to just kind of sort of play around with. And it is 38 pages long, right? This is the pocket guide. And within there, you have the cue screen, shooting modes, uh, menu navigation, AF, uh, your setup menu, the Wi-Fi settings, what's in the viewfinder, all the buttons at the back there. And I've been using Canon cameras for well, all my career. And I'm well versed in the, you know, the, the, the setup of these cameras. And even I found that too much. I spent half the time thinking about what was in there and how I could use it in the, the camera rather than actually just taking photographs. And that's the problem with modern cameras. I think they've become too complex that by offering solutions to problems that do not yet exist for the photographer, they are just, they're, they're confusing people. Perhaps this is at the core of why a lot of people are turning back to analog, getting rid of this overwhelming sea of choices and options that cameras seem to build, be building on year on year to, uh, to a point where I, I don't know where it would just end. I mean, where do you think it's going to end? Cameras are getting more complex. They're offering more choices. How do I know when I really need to actually upgrade my camera or it's just kind of, it's a bit of gas, you know, the gear acquisition syndrome <laughs> making itself known, which we all, me included, you know, suffer from from time to time. I think specifically when I was working at the studio, I started photographing a lot of dogs of all things. And I had a 5D Mark II at the time. And it was, it was fine. The, the camera itself was great for static images, for, for portraits where people aren't like charging around and, and I had more control over the situation. But I was finding that with the dogs, some of them in the studio would be a little bit far away. They'd be off. And I was having to crop into the pictures more than I would have liked. I don't like cropping into pictures. I, I, it's not the same as actually, you know, getting the crop right in camera. The perspective looks a bit odd, but in the case of the dogs, it was helpful because then I could also make bigger prints. So there was a very definitive answer to the 5D Mark II in the situation that I needed was not up to snuff. I needed the 5DS. So that's what I did. Do you see where that, that's a physical, barrier that, the, that we need to overcome by using a different camera. But for most people, I think once they get a certain camera of a reasonable standard, that really come, that becomes less of an issue. Do you really need a trillion billion focusing points? Do you really need super, super, super fast AF unless you are a wildlife photographer doing birds in flight? I mentioned in a previous video that I'd like this year to help make photography more accessible to everybody. And part of that is introducing concepts and themes throughout the year. And on the 4th of February, I'm going to start my first live primer foundation workshop talking about looking for natural light and, and how to employ it in photography. This idea of, of again, keeping everything nice and simple, one thing at a time. Light is at the heart of all photography. If you'd like to find out more about that workshop, I'd love to have you there with me, then please click on the link in the description box or the first comment below. I hope you sort of see that all these, this bombardment of, of options 
takes your eye off the ball. You start looking at all the tricky, really fun things that the camera can do, and you're, 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 you're wanting to apply them to every photograph that you're taking. It's like, and I'm gonna say something nasty about BMW drivers here, <laughs> but I'm a BMW driver. You know, they buy a car and it's like they drive to prove that all the safety features that the car has actually work, right? So it's, you know, that's, that's kind of, it. so consequently, your, your camera is holding you back because it's, it's getting in the way of you seeing the pictures, of you actually having cool photographs. So how do we cut this back? How do we pare back all this kind of vibe that the camera is giving us to actually begin to take photographs where the camera is supporting us and not you know, getting in the way? In my own case, I was probably fortunate that I started on film, that you know, the camera options were fairly limited. We didn't have all this kind of fancy stuff. I, mean, I had a Canon A1, which for the time was fairly technologically advanced, you know, various aperture, you know, aperture mode, shutter mode, program, auto as well, for some reason, and things like bracketing. But that was kind of it. So I was, I was in a position where I could put the camera on P for professional <laughs> and just take photographs. I, the camera did its own thing. I got used to actually seeing the world as the 50 mil lens saw it or it's the 28 mil lens, or the 7210 that I would zoom in and out. So my options were fairly limited in regards to what I was doing. And because I just wanted to get the photographs, I, yeah, I let the camera do all the heavy lifting in regards to the exposure and just took pictures. So I would say, you know, if you're, if you're coming into photography new, don't worry so much about all this, this, this idea that you know, people are like, you must get into manual mode. Manual mode is where all the pros live and all that kind of stuff. Uh, you know, that's, yeah, that's not true. All right? I, I photograph in aperture priority mostly, so go figure, all right? And you are sitting there just learning both how the camera works in slow steps, but also at the same time training your eye to see the world. When I made the switch to digital back, and it was before the 5D uh, Mark II, I forget what it was, it was like Canon 250D, somewhere around there. There were a whole bunch of features that I'd never had before. It was my first autofocus camera. Right? Up until that point, all my cameras would be manual focus. These days, people are like, how did you have a manual focus? I said, because that was the option that we had to use, mostly. So you, you just did it, you learned how to do it didn't think about it. So I was confronted with manual focus. What a, even now, focusing options, you've got AI focus and then a servo focus and you know single point and all that kind of stuff. I don't really know what they do, but I can imagine if you, know, if you were new to photography, you'd look at this and go, wow, there's, there's like four different ways of focusing. I, who knew? And then add in all the focus points and what have you. Just work with one thing at a time. That, I think, you know, we, we often forget this, that you can't learn everything at once. There's a, there's a lovely phrase by Red Foreman in a TV show called That 70s Show that was in the 90s. <laughs> he goes, he's talking to his son, uh, Eric, and he goes, you can't half ass many things. Whole ass one thing. <laughs> so this, this is lovely. So, so, you know, when you get your new camera or you're just, you're learning a technique, one thing, right? Don't be like, today I'm going to learn this and then tomorrow I'm going to do this. Just one thing at a time. Take it slow. <laughs> so, so just, you know, it's not a race. You know, I, I want to make it clear. This is not a kit bashing video. Throughout this little film, video, chat, whatever you want to call it, I've been showing photographs of some of my favorite photographers. And there is something that's sort of common throughout all these pictures. They all come from the past. And they were all taken with cameras that are significantly less feature rich than even the most basic camera today. So do not think 
that a lack of gear is, is holding you back. Often the problem lies here. I'm not immune to the, the idea of, of, of gear feeling like it is a way of, of kind of revitalizing your, your approach to photography and you know, making it more fun and thinking this new lens will fix everything. I've been there, I've done it. it in the short term, it makes a little difference because obviously it's a new toy, but it doesn't fix the underlying problem, which was... I should have been actually training myself to use the gear more effectively, to, to work in the constraints that actually allow you, me, everybody watching this, to have these little epiphanies. They go, wow, man, okay, I never knew I could do this. I'm, I'm now trying stuff out that I never thought of. And that's the key to making these kind of really cool photographs is not chasing after something shiny, but using the gear that you already have in ways that you would never have considered. And when you find those little avenues, those doors open up to you, that's where creativity happens. You can't plan for creativity. You can't say, I'm going to get a new lens, I'm going to get a new camera, and then I'll be more creative. Creativity happens when you're not planning for it. I'm going to do something crazy here for a second. I'm going to talk about post-processing. <gasps> on the camera, on the photographic, no, right? <laughs> this is, we're not turning into how to think. I just, I, I thought about it and I, I do get comments from time to time on the channel that say, look, can you recommend about this or post-processing? How can I do that? And, how can I, and, and, I, and I feel, especially, especially when I've spoken to people, in the one-to-ones and what have you, and, when we, and when, whenever we talk about processing, it feels like people want to run again before they can walk. In Lightroom, Photoshop, whatever, if you are struggling with it and you're trying to recreate all these fancy effects and things like that, pair it back and just get the knowledge and the ability to create in post the image that you want, that's a solid, straight down the line, nothing too fancy photograph. If you practice on getting the basics right, not worrying about trying to get the gear to do things for you, and, and, you know, and, and then all these kind of super duper effects that you can do in the digital darkroom, then your photography becomes a lot stronger. Right, suffering from this gear acquisition syndrome, gas, happens to everybody, it's part of photography. I love a, a fancy camera as much as the next person. I, I, and I think some of the old mechanical analog stuff, they are just some of the most beautiful objects ever made. And if you like the technical side of things, if you are drawn to all the digital bits and the menus and the options that you have, then that's absolutely fine. But if you are struggling with your photography, if you do feel like something is not quite right, look inwards a bit and go, is this because I think my gear is holding me back? Or is this because I haven't learned how to see the world as a photographer yet? That's a question only you really can answer. Thank you ever so much for watching. Check out this video over here and I will see you next time.